Welcome back to Casa Refine. My name is Jorge and welcome to Delulu Land where I think I can squeeze in one last minute makeover a few days before New Year's. Clearly we're well into the new year. Um, happy New Year by the way. Um, let's just keep carrying through because I think this makeover turned out really nicely. Um, let's just ignore the timeline. <laughs> To be honest with you, this hallway is actually pretty small, but that's a little boring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make it moody. I'm gonna bring in some contrast and make it flow kind of with the rest of the house. And you know, just because it's small, it doesn't mean it needs to be forgotten. So this hallway of course serves as that transitional space into other rooms. So why not make it a little bit more special? And I'm really not trying to do anything crazy in here. The biggest thing for me is keeping things simple, but cohesive to the rest of the house. So I have a couple things in mind that I wanna do. I'm gonna paint the walls, paint the doors, add some trim and address the elephant in the room the boob light. <laughs> oh, it's so ugly. And you know what? There's nothing really wrong with these. It's just not my thing. Of course, I like things somewhat minimal. I like a little bit of contrast. Plus I do really in fact like playing with this idea of something that's kind of old or vintage with something new and modern and kind of blending the two to some extent and just making it feel a little bit more timeless rather than trendy. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more molding to the ceiling. As you can see, there's already that. So I'm gonna add this one, which I've been adding to the rest of the house. Um, it's very simple, but overall, I just wanna keep the molding quite simple and nothing too overdone, um, but just enough to add some subtle detail. I feel like this, or just molding in general, is a great way to slowly start upgrading your spaces. Now you can definitely take your time, go room by room, but this starts to add a level of craftsmanship that just makes a simple, boring house better. So last night I finished putting up the trim. I even finished putting up the caulking, which is not my favorite activity, but it looks so much better. Of course, I still need to paint that. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the doors. I'm actually gonna go for black for the sake of consistency in the house. I'm also gonna swap out the hardware. Um, I think it's the Pismo collection from Kiwi Set. Also the hinges. And since I'm already gonna be doing that, I'm just going to take the doors off and, and paint them outside. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot easier than taping and putting drop cloths for this. So this is the first coat of the black paint. I'm probably going to end up doing two coats, maybe three, probably two. Um, but it's looking really good. It's going to be like a matte finish, so it's not going to be so shiny. And it's perfect because it kind of hides imperfections. So I think that'll be good. While I wait for that first coat of black paint to dry on the doors, I redirected my attention to the molding that I just hung and I'm actually going to prime it first. I actually have done the mistake of not priming wood before and in a couple of months or years, it starts to discolor and kind of turn yellowish. So definitely priming is important. While I'm at it, I also hung the trim on the dining room. It's been on my list for several months now. So I thought this was the perfect time to get that taken care of, painted everything and and we are ready for, well, I guess the next coat of black paint on the doors. The doors are painted, dried, and ready to be hung back into the hallway. So I did that. Plus, I also painted this pocket door, which I actually can't remove. I guess you can't really remove pocket doors once they're installed. But next up, it's time to prep for our walls. So for the walls, I will be applying some lime wash paint. It's something that I've been doing for years. I absolutely love it. 
And again, we want that continuity throughout the house. So I'm gonna prep for that because when you do lime wash paint on like drywall, you need a special primer, an acrylic based primer specifically. So I'm applying that. And while I'm at it, I'm giving a fresh coat of paint to the trim because it really makes a big difference, especially when it's white and it starts to get a little dirty, you know? Everything's looking great so far. Now I did paint the doors black and hung them back up. I actually had a little help from my dad because they were a little bit tricky. They just never go in or exactly like they were. So they're back up. I went ahead and also primed the walls, painted the trim. And at this point, I'm basically just waiting for the lime wash paint to arrive, but it hasn't even been shipped out yet. So I'm feeling a little nervous um, if it's going to be arriving by my set deadline. But I totally understand like this was kind of like a last minute project. I should have ordered it weeks ago but now the moment we've all been waiting for i've been waiting for for a very long time to get rid of this monstrosity <laughs> honestly it's not even that bad but i don't love it so let me show you what i got My gosh, it's looking so nice in here. I love this light fixture. It's one that I've used in the past. It's actually the same one that I have in my bedroom, but I actually, what I did is I ordered a larger one for the room and swapped it out and I put this one here. It's wonderful. It brings in some brass and with the matte black doors and the hardware and all that, it's just, it's looking real good. Previously, I had primed the walls to get ready for some lime wash paint and it has arrived. I'm so excited. Removing tape is always satisfying. Let's transition into our lime wash paint. So here is um, the one that I'm using by Color Atelier. No, this is not sponsored. Now again, like I said, I am using two different colors. The first one is called Plateau. It's gonna be a little bit darker, kind of a creamier color. This two tone effect is going to create more variation and make the lime wash more apparent, especially since it's white. Now I'm trying my best not to be perfect. This is something that I have learned over the years because once I start trying to be perfect it visually will not i guess respond like you want it to because the thing is that once this dries it dries very different than what it looks like when it's wet think of it like wet cement kind of okay it's the next day that first coat of the lime wash is now dry i'm ready to apply the second coat i think i'm wearing a dress <laughs> um Anyways, I'm gonna go in with this lighter color. This color here is old white, and I hopefully it'll be sufficient with just this coat. It actually is going relatively quickly because there really isn't that much wall. And just like try not to be perfect, you know, going back and forth, kind of getting up in there. It makes it more more interesting in my opinion. Some nice large strokes, some areas more than others, and just let it start to do. And if you um, have too much, you can get like an old rag, like wipe it off. It's something that I learned recently. You kind of do something like that. Here where it's smaller, I'm just using a like smaller brush to get into these like harder to get access areas. And it's literally the same thing, just nothing too perfect. You know, it's such a good feeling once you see the work that you put in start to pay off a little bit and you see that vision come together. But speaking of work, I've also been working on something special for us. Okay, really, really quickly. So I don't know if you remember, but a few videos ago, I made these little rustic wooden stands. People really love them and they're really great because it it's, adds some texture, it brings in a natural element, right? So these are great because you can put like a soap bottle, put it on the bathroom counter, maybe a candle. Of course, never leave candles unattended, be safe with candles, maybe a plant stand. I mean, the possibilities are endless or just to decorate a shelf or something. So there was the small one, there's a medium, they sold out, but I'm so happy because um, I made a few more with my dad now. And they are back in stock on the shop. These are really, really great. They're handmade. Each one's gonna be different. And now there's the large one. Isn't that neat? I mean, look at that beautiful color. 
and they're hand worked, hand carved. I wouldn't use these for food use, maybe as like a stand and maybe put like some platters on top or something like that. But I mean, you could put this on a dining table, on a coffee table. It's pretty heavy too. They're back in stock, gasarefineshop.com. Made with love for me, Gasa, to yours. Okay, back to the makeover. Strike a pose. <laughs> Um, this is a vintage, sort of ornate wood frame. It's quite remarkable. I kind of haven't really done anything with it because I just, um, I just didn't know what to do. So I think this is the perfect project to create some artwork for. And notice with this, it has sort of those like golden tones. So right now I'm going to kind of probably stick to the primary colors. And right now what's mostly speaking to me is red. I think it's just such a powerful color. It's very moody and there's something calming about it at the same time. So this is one of those art pieces where I don't really have a game plan. I'm just sort of letting the process speak to me and guide the direction. So I'm taking some red paint, adding a matte uh, sculpting medium here to give it some texture. And to create that texture, I'm using this piece of paper that some of the paint is transferred to. And on the paper, I add some color. Then I transfer that back onto the canvas and the result is kind of phenomenal it's kind of interesting kind of like a leathery texture but then the color i don't know it's very beautiful then i'm taking my knife to create a shape letting that dry it's still looking a little flat so let's bring in some color with blue again working on the primary colors here and look at that isn't that kind of an interesting thing kind of looks like a river kind of looks like i don't know what does it look like to you but once that is done it's time to put the finishing touches and this hallway makeover is pretty much coming to completion ah! my gosh it's done it's finally done okay i'm being dramatic <laughs> Before I do a final walkthrough, let's take a quick trip down memory lane and remind yourselves of what this hallway used to look like before. Pretty simple, basic, nothing special for sure. But with a little bit of patience, with a little bit of love, I was able to transform it into this. I'm so happy with this hallway makeover. I absolutely love the final result. It's, it feels finished, finally. Now again, this is a pretty small hallway and it's not the craziest makeover, but this update really makes it feel polished, finished, and it just, it looks more interesting in here, let's be honest. Now there isn't that much else to say, but let me just quickly talk about some of my design decisions. Now I feel like continuity is important in a house, so painting the doors black was essential in here. And I was a little bit nervous at first because it's like the extreme opposite of what it was. Going from white to black is kind of a big contrast. Um, but once I started put, hanging them back up, I realized this was the right decision. Not only does it add contrast in here, but it just, it adds a little bit of dimension and just, it makes it more interesting to look at in here. Of course, also pairing it with the matte black hardware. Of course, that simple sort of uh, dental style. I, I don't know if it's technically dental, but that crown molding, just a little bit of uh, detail just to make it feel more finished. The boob light is gone. The boob light is finally gone. I love this light fixture. You've seen me use this before. And I love the fact that it has sort of this like sort of aged brass color to it but it's, it has the sort of industrial, not too industrial look to it. So it, I think it, it, it would work well with like a contemporary space. And I think it's wonderful. This is an LED fixture, but I think they also sell like the, um, the light bulb version. You know, a runner is always a good idea, not just for design value, but for acoustics in here, the floors kind of creak sometimes. So, but even with the echoes in here, I think the rug is really helping kind of absorb some of that sound. And I just love the design of this. I think this is a washable rug. Um, and I just, I love the color in here. It kind of brightens up the room. Now, this mirror right here, as I said, this is a pretty small hallway, so a large mirror like this helps give the illusion of a larger space to some extent. And I opted for a more modern profile because, of course, 
I don't want it to lean too traditional, so something like this helps to kind of balance it out. I also opted for the brass color, and I think it's wonderful. You can check yourself out as you're walking by here, which I'm kind of having a crazy hair day. Then of course, some beautiful artwork here with more kind of vintage traditional frames. I think it looks beautiful. And this piece that I did, I'm kind of inspired by the colors. I'm, I'm kind of craving some more artwork, so I might make a few more pieces to sell. You know, I often say this, but for more kind of smaller or awkward spaces, I think an accent stool is a good way to sort of fill it up. This one right here is sort of a reclaimed wood uh, stool. I have a few of them available still on the shop. And I love, of course, the color that it brings in here, the texture, but it, it, it adds interest in here. It kind of plays with height a little bit. Then I added this vase with some faux, kind of realistic looking tulips. And I think they're really beautiful in this like red color. I do sell these as well, but that's pretty much it for this hallway makeover. I am so happy with it. I'm glad it's finally done. Let me know your thoughts on this hallway makeover. Be sure to check out the description for links to pretty much everything that I, I can link. I will put that there. Also get yourself some of these little rustic risers, again, made with my dad. <laughs> There is the small one, the medium, and now the large. Also maybe my Maya uh, Cemento pot, which I make these. I, I love these, the texture on these is really beautiful. Maybe get yourself a pedestal stand if you're looking to display a sculpture or something. Also make these with my dad. I love the plaster. So refined pieces made with love from Mikasa to yours. Oh my gosh, I could ramble forever, but Thanks again so much for watching today's makeover. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna start planning my next makeover. So until then, actually, I will, there'll be more videos, but have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.